the Anchor Shipping Company of Nelson bought a new ship for their Cook Strait service, the American-built Hualalai, formerly an inter-island ferry in the Hawaiian Islands. As she'll be doing the same job in New Zealand, Hualalai needed little alteration before being put into service again, but she had a complete overhaul and was renovated throughout. Slight alterations to her quarters raised her passenger accommodation to 234. After seven months refit, she has the anchor colours on her funnel and a new name on her bows, one more in keeping with her new country. With her upper works spick and span, she's ready for her first run on the Wellington Nelson service. The turbine-driven 3,500-ton NIO is a trim addition to our inter-island shipping. In the National Art Gallery, Wellington, the New Zealand Academy of Fine Arts is holding its autumn exhibition of selected works by well-known artists from all over the country. Stuart McLennan, director of the National Gallery, discusses with the artist a self-portrait by F.V. Ellis. The stalwarts of the Academy are well represented. Cedric Savage by his familiar Golden Bay landscapes, Sidney Higgs by several watercolours, including the Dart River, and Archibald Nicoll by his usual Canterbury oils, including Stormy Evening Harewood. Highlights of the watercolour section are Summer Afternoon and Haymakers by Stuart McLennan and Two Cloud Studies by T.A. McCormick. Beverly Shaw points out details in her portrait of Lady Pomari. Louise Henderson explains her delicate still life of sunflowers. James Gorn carved this fine head in wood entitled Youth. Forsaking his usual woodcuts, George Woods on the left is exhibiting oils this year. One of the few controversial pictures in the show is DJ Ramager's Cave. Sculptor Alex Fraser tells the artist what he thinks about it. But no matter what the artist thinks about his own or a fellow artist's work, the public is the main critic. And the public, wisely or otherwise, likes and buys the lifelike portraits, the recognisable still lifes, and the familiar landscapes that this year, as always, form the bulk of the Academy's selection. Twenty-two miles from Nelson in the South Island of New Zealand lies Port Mapua. At the Mapua Lime and Marble Works, non-metallic minerals won from the scattered quarries of the Nelson district are processed. These white marble lumps will be crushed into chips for terrazzo manufacture. The conveyor carries the crushed chips to the vibrating screens, which sift the marble into different sizes. Altogether, five different grades of chips come off. Terrazzo work was originally done in Italy, but in New Zealand at the present time, it's used extensively for hand basins, sink tops and tiles. The grinding of marble powder to microscopic fineness is carried out in the micronizer. Blown from a compressor outside, terrific jets of air swirl marble particles round an air chamber, and they grind each other to minuteness. Fabric tubes filter escaped air, retaining marble dust that would otherwise be wasted, while micronized marble is drawn off. Of the many minerals quarried, two of the most interesting are talc magnesite and white marble. They lie in picturesque country at Cobb Ridge and Takaka Hill. Narua Quarry at Takaka Hill has the advantage of being almost alongside the road. From the marbled crest above the quarry, Tasman Bay shows up in the distance. While all around, these interesting fluted formations of grey and white marble demonstrate the curious erosive effect of the weather. Down at the quarry face, it's tough work for tough men. The white marble is scintillating, hard on the eyes and heavy. It's a durable building material and was used for the House of Parliament in Wellington. Explosive is used to dislodge shelves of the marble, which are then broken up on the ground with sledgehammers. This white marble is of particularly good quality and is used extensively for glass, terrazzo, paint and putty. Before being sent back to Mapua for processing, 
It's crushed to small size near the quarry site. From the road bend a few miles farther on can be viewed Takaka Valley to the coast. On the left in the distance lies the mineral bearing country of Cobb Ridge. The Cobb pipeline is part of the hydroelectric scheme which helped to open up the back country. A road was built and quarries followed. These mineral outcrops, valuable for their talc and magnesium content, were discovered by geological survey. Talc is used for pottery, paint and rubber. Magnesium as a widely used tobacco fertilizer. Owing to rugged conditions, quarrying cannot go on the year round in this area, so they make as much headway as possible in good weather. Millions of tons of talc magnesite outcrop on Cobb Ridge. Exploitation is dependent on accessibility and road development. Back at the works, they're ready to ship processed minerals to some of the hundred factories supplied throughout the country. Up to the present, 30,000 tons of white marble, talc magnesite, dolomite, feldspar, pegmatite, serpentine, ochre, china clay, quartzite and limestone have left Mapua. Where formerly most of these minerals were imported, they're now all available in the quarries of the Nelson district. <laughs> <laughs>